Hello, my name is Mari. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, I'm covering resilience. So what is resilience? Resilience is the ability to provide and maintain an acceptable level of service in the face of faults and challenges to normal operation. Or to rephrase it, being able to resist errors that are either coming from inside your program or coming or are being generated from the inputs that we're receiving from our customers. In the context of this example and this video, I'm going to be focusing on a type that I think everybody's using nowadays is the HTTP server, which is specifically in the net HTTP package and the type is called server. I'm focusing on this one because this one covers most of the things that I want to discuss this time and I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody is using, that, using it nowadays. So let's focus on something really important about the HTTP server and that is timeouts. Timeouts define a way or rather the way the connections work in the HTTP server are really handled by timeouts around the type, the server type that is. So there is a wait, a, a handshake. There is a request header section, a request uh, body handling, a response that you send back to the client. There is an idle space, and then we're waiting for new requests. This is sort of the process that all the connections and all the requests happen when we receive a message, either doesn't matter what method, HTTP method uh, that is, a, a, a get, post, um, put, patch, whatever the case may be. This is always the process that we have, and depending on the configuration that we have on our server, we may have different behavior. I want to talk about different things, specifically looking at the way that we have right here on the diagram. The request body and the response consist of the serve HTTP method, which is usually, I would say, I would say all the time, implemented either using a handler, the handler func, or the handler type in the net HTTP package, basically the implementation of your routes. And then there are different timeout fields that apply to the service, to the server type in net HTTP. For example, we have the read timeout that consists from the wait to the request body. We have also the uh, write timeout that consists from the requesting the request headers to the response. And also there is a timeout handler that is sort of like a handler that applies specifically only to the section that we have right here when we are dealing with the HTTP serve HTTP method or the handler itself. There's also an idle uh, timeout that I, I'm, I'm not going to be covering this time, but I'm mentioning right here because this is one of the things that we need to, uh, uh, that you need to also consider as well. I didn't include one of the other things, which is there is another field called, if I recall correctly, um, re read header timeout, header timeout or something, uh, something along those lines. It also applies when you're reading the headers from the client. So th there are a bunch of different ways that we can use or different ways, uh, different rules that we can use for preventing I issues when we are reading and sending data back to our clients. So I want to show you um, different examples using all these different timeouts and you will see what I'm trying to discuss and why is it really important to define values specifically when you're using the net HTTP server type in Go. Let's jump into the code and we'll talk to you in a few seconds. As usual, the link to the code that I'm going to be showing you is in the description of this video. So please feel free to check it out, play with it, clone it, have fun. So the first example I'm going to be showing you is a, <clears throat> a simple basic HTTP server is using the default configuration. It's not doing anything spectacular. It's using this package called HTTP router used for demonstration purposes. Is um, You can use Gorilla Mox. You can use the standard library. You don't have to use this package, but I wanted to show you something that is specifically demonstrate using the post HTTP method with examples that I'm going to be showing you. As you can see, I'm not defining anything spectacular. I have an HTTP server. I have a handler right here, and this is running your listen and serve function right away. Now, this is not the way that you should be deploying in production any service like this. You should be considering the things that I'm going to be showing you, as well as the graceful shutdown. I will be leaving the link to that video in the description as well, so you can, you can see that uh, when you have time. So <clears throat> if we look, as example, I'm going to be running my server. And the way I'm, the, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is in cases where we don't have any configuration for the timeouts specifically indicated, there are cases where we can have 
bad actors that then that it doesn't they don't have to be users trying to mess up our services but they could be a slow servers a slow customers or things like that and we need to consider cases where what should we do in those uh, situations should we just uh, get rid of those connections ignoring time them out or do something about it by default the http server type in go does not provide any timeouts and this is really important to consider when you're putting anything in production like the Cloudflare uh, diagram that I was showing you. Again, I will be leaving the link in the description as well, so, as well, so you can read that article. Uh, one of the biggest problems that you may have in the beginning when you're writing Go and you're writing uh, and you're using HTTP servers and the HTTP server type is that by default you don't have timeouts. So if a request is coming from a client and that client never finishes, it will be taking uh, resources from your service and it could take down the whole service that you have. So always define timeouts, which is the example I'm going to show you right here. So you have this bad actor that is basically just trying to post to the, to the endpoint that I defined below or right there, uh, before, and is implementing a reader that is basically reading each one of the uh, values that I'm indicating that I'm going to pass in as the part of the post payload and I'm sleeping 500 milliseconds right and this is just an example of something that could be happening again because the client is slow or maybe the client is trying to mess up your with your service so if I run this example if I go to the bad actor folder and if I run it you will notice that uh, I'm writing a uh, word every single uh, time what the heck happened so in doing a post oh sorry so I'm doing hello i should have used hello instead of post but that's fine let's let's try i mean instead of a slow so if i run it again it will try to write each one of the letters um slowly by 500 milliseconds each one of the times now this might not be a problem right here but consider that you have 100 million requests that happen to be using this same endpoint and all of them are doing are having the same behavior this is not going to be scale it's going to it's going to scale so one of the things that we need to consider here is that we need to define a timeout now i want to define a timeout that indicates hey the the process cannot take any more time than 500 milliseconds <clears throat> And with this, what is going to happen is that after 500 milliseconds, the request that is coming from this bad actor client is going to be canceled. So let's look at that. So if I run this again, and if I go back to my bad actor, I will run one, two, and it will it already time out. So what this is doing is that because I indicated a read timeout, that if you remember in the di diagram that I had before, if it's taking too much time to read, which is the line that I have right here, I'm trying to read the body, which is basically the payload that is coming from the client, is taking too long. Therefore, I said, you know what? I'm moving on. Goodbye, client. See you next time. So this is one way to prevent issues like, uh, you know, make your service more re uh, resilient and th therefore uh, be able to resist errors that you are, well, not errors that are coming from your service, but rather errors that are being uh, triggered by the, your customers now there are a bunch of like i said there is a an write timeout uh, that is similar uh, you can indicate in uh, whatever time duration that you want and also let me jump into the description of this type and you will notice that the that configuration that i was showing you before we have the read timeout the write timeout there is a, another um, where are you uh, idle timeout which is another one I, I mentioned to you and that's basically what it is now let me show you an example that uses something really cool that maybe you want to have different configurations for uh, your handlers depending on the logic that you have maybe you want to define a different uh, sort of like a timeout I will show you next okay let, give me give me a few seconds so you have another example that is using another type defining the net HTTP package called timeout handler and what does this what this thing does is that it sits in between the timeouts and the actual logic that is implemented in the actual handler and it sort of defines a context deadline and if you haven't seen the video covering context again i will leave the i will leave that one again in the description so you can check it out the way it works is again in 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 the http router that i'm using is basically you need to define a a wrapper around the handler that you want to 
you find a timeout. So in this case, I have a new wrapper, or rather, a new handler called a slow that literally just, you know, sends a message called hello. We receive a value and we print out hello with the value that we're receiving and we sleep one second. The way I have it right here is that I define the timeout as, as two seconds and if it takes longer than two seconds. So basically all of this operation that I have right here from uh, basically all this handler, if it happens to take longer than or more than two seconds or equal to two, to two seconds, it will trigger a uh, request uh, a timeout uh, in the handler and the client will fail. So if I go and run a curl x post oops before that let me run the server so i need to run my server everything is fine if i run http localhost 8080 is slow and let's say mario what is going to happen is going to sleep for once for one second and it's going to print out the result now if i go back to the code that i have before which is right here and i do something like I said, it's, it's going to be exceeding the amount of time that I indicated below. What is going to happen is going to be triggering a, an error that says request took too long. So if I do it again, it will say, hey, it's sleeping. And I got, uh, oh, you know why? Because I didn't stop and restart the server. You know, that happens sometimes. So if I go back and I run the post, it will sleep and I will be getting an error that says my request took too long. Now, this is um a few different ways to handle or deal with, with resilience when you use the http server type in the standard library let's jump into the conclusions because i'm not done with this when building software architectures in go and if you happen to be using the http package specifically the server type you should be defining values for your timeout fields in your server type this is important because you can avoid issues like the one i was showing you that everything doesn't time out or things like where you specifically need a logic or some sort of duration or a cancellation for a specific handlers. And there are a few other ways to prevent issues when you're receiving data like the type max header bytes, if I recall correctly. Again, I will be leaving those in the description. I didn't cover those specifically in this video, but this is one way to make sure that the service that you're building that happens to be using the HTTP package, like I said, and the server type is resilient and is able to handle errors that are coming from your customers there are other things that i didn't cover but i have already covered in previous episodes and in previous videos that consider cancellations and and deadlines when you're making requests using the http client type so i will be leaving those as well as usual the link to this playlist will be in the description so thank you for watching and i will talk to you next time see you and stay safe